Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another book review. Today we are talking about Floating Dragon by Peter Straub. Um, this one... <laughs> Ooh, Alright, so the issues I had right up in the forward section of this review uh, is the first 200 pages seem superfluous. There, there seems to be no point whatsoever to them because not even the character development really gets ramped up until after the 200 page mark. You don't really start caring. I didn't start caring about anyone until about the 500 page mark. Um, it, well, no, probably 400 page mark. For some odd reason, I have it in my head that this book is 700 pages, and that's not true. This, this copy of the book is 596 pages. But um, I didn't really start to connect with everyone until people started dying off and then I started to see what people meant to the characters um, which is an odd way to go about a, a story like this uh, a book this long it seemed seemed backward to me honestly especially when those first 200 pages are so utterly boring um, that's my feelings on it of course uh, the whole reason I read this one at this time in my life is because numerous people brought up um, the fact, even though I mentioned in the video that uh, that Floating Dragon is supposedly a inspiration for Stephen King's It, I had several people in that video saying, hey, hey Floating Dragon was an inspiration for... I, I know, I said it in the video. But the, the whole reason I did it was to compare the two. And if I'm honest, I saw some themes here and there, but it was nowhere near as glaringly obvious as it was with Phantoms. We'll go over all that in a separate video. Um, but, of course, you have the, the hibernating monster, or whatever, the, the creature, the, the, e the evil in the town, that kind of thing. That's pretty much where the similarities come in, the history of the town and whatnot. Um, other than that, if you were going to go into this book reading it solely because you want to find the inspiration for it, I, I suggest you go read Phantoms by Dean Koontz instead. Um, Oddly enough, um, and where I'm going with this is, oddly enough, with all the people saying that this book mu had to have inspired it, there is a lot of stuff in this book inspired by Stephen King. There are notes of Carrie, there are notes of The Shining, there are notes of The Stand, especially The Stand. Um, there's whole sections that, they're not carbon copies, don't get me wrong, this isn't a theft of services or anything like, not theft of services, but this isn't plagiarism or anything like that. But there are notes in there that harken back to King's work before that. Um, and I guess you could point to other authors as well, so, but, but there were very strong similarities between these. And if we're talking about, uh, uh, comparing the two authors together, I guess because, you know, they work together, so everybody always compares these two. Um, Straub is the more literary version of Stephen King, and Stephen King is the more genre version of Peter Straub. Which brings me to another point of mine, which is, this is Peter Straub's most genre book. Um, this, it's a horror novel from the get-go, uh, whereas Ghost Story is more of a character piece, and so is Shadowland to an extent, and Julia and If You Could See Me Now were definitely more character-driven pieces. Um, it's, uh, by the way, I have written, I have read all the way from uh, Julia all the way up to this one so far. If you want retro reviews of those other ones, let me know down there in the doobly-doo. But this one feels like an absurd horror novel, like he was writing for fun from most of the book. There is some, some seriousness there toward the end, but most of it is just straight-up horror shenanigans. Um, like, there's, there's one scene, and this is maybe a slight spoiler, um, but there's one scene where, you know, criminals go to rob a house and the usual horror uh, movie tropes happen, that kind of thing. Um, so if you're looking for a more easily accessible Peter Straub, I know there's going to be tons of people who disagree with me here, but if you're looking for a more genre accessible Peter Straub, maybe this one, because there is a, after the first 200 pages, there is a lot that happens. And there's a lot of extended horror tropes that you're probably going to have a lot of fun with. Uh, the problem for me is that never really, this book never really gelled. It was not coherent to me. There was no, no cogent uh, glue that held everything together that made it feel like a complete story. 
uh, unlike uh, his books like Ghost Story seemed to come full circle, Shadowlands seemed to come full circle. Julia was a little off on its rocker, and so was If You Could See Me Now, but I would rather talk about those in those individual videos. With this one, it literally felt like he was trying to take everything that he had thought of in the horror genre to get it out, because after this, from what I understand, he did mostly thrillers, or supernatural thrillers, and got far away from that stuff. I even saw one time on uh, Twitter, because he's very active on Twitter, if you tweet at him, he's likely going to respond to you, and he responded to one person who was talking about Floating Dragon, and he said exactly this, he said, I wrote the book to get that out of my system. So I'm thinking that's exactly what happened here. Um, is that he wrote this horror novel to try and kind of put a period at the end of his horror novel writing days. Now, I, I read Coco a long time ago. Coco is the book after this one. I don't remember a thing about it, uh, but there are several other books, and if you read the, the descriptions of them, they, they do seem a little more literary on that side, so I'd love to hear what you guys uh, think about where Peter Straub went from this, if his style changed after this or whatever. I plan to read Coco eventually, but uh, with, with this one, it's kind of put me off Straub for a while. Uh, kind of like if you can see me, now, if you could only see me now, something, something like that. That one put me off of Straub for a while too, um, because I didn't understand the ending. The uh, funny, funny thing about that one is nobody understood the ending until we asked him on Twitter, and then everybody popped up on Twitter going, "Oh, I thought so. Sure you did. Sure you did." But have you read Floating Dragon? Uh, let me know down there in the comments below. Over, I'm gonna give it three stars. Uh, I'm not hugely impressed by it, but uh, it's some people's favorite straw book, so definitely rage at me if you want to down there in the doobly-doo. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another book review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye! Oh, and one more note. You can expect the breakdown of all the stuff back here that I wrote down that might have been uh, it-related. You can expect that video next Thursday. Sorry there was no Thursday theorist today, but I wanted to get, I'm so far behind in my reviews, I gotta get these things out. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.